comes the, here comes the, here comes the, y'all don't really worry like who, yeah. here comes the, who, no, here comes the, who, oh, here comes the, y'all don't really worry yeah. like who, yeah. here comes the, who, no, here comes the, who, oh, here comes the, y'all don't really worry. Yeah. I know he didn't really want it now. Let's just jump right on into them transcripts. See how far we can get. Let's get it. All right. This is where we left off on part two. So we're going to slide on down. They come back from lunch. They have to start the, the look of it all over again with the roll call, the nine, whole nine yards. I'm only showing this so y'all can see that I'm not skipping around. Now, they come back and there's Julian. He says, so we did some digging. Now, mind you, he's still not going to show any proof of anything, just so you know ahead of time, so don't get too excited. That we were able to do over the lunch hour, which didn't turn up a whole lot on the question of Mr. Wiley's relationship or any interactions he previously had with Ronald Watts. There was an assistant United States attorney contact. I don't think that person is in our office any longer. That Mr. Greenberg had. I reached out to some other people in the office who aren't familiar with the Watts convictions. Why don't you try some that are? And so we did determine that it's not the first time Mr. Wiley has mentioned Mr. Watts in his interactions with the current crop of agents, or at least in connection with this investigation. Well, yeah, we know that because that was his excuse. Once he got exposed by myself and others as to being cooperator number one that's what his excuse was and he's got to cover all bases for that so vlad tv or anybody else who may be listening understand this what they're saying is because it's with this current crop of agents in this investigation prior to the oblock rico the FBG duck murder trial. There is no record of Martell mentioning Ronald Watts anywhere on planet Earth. Get that straight before you go repeating things. Mis misrepresenting what was actually being said. Because I've already heard that a few times. And and I know it's easy to do because you hear it in your ear so much. You hear that. And, and, and it was Watts and it was Watts and it was Watts. Is it kind of burns in your brain, but you're going to need to pay attention if you're going to speak on it. Now, it says uh, there's a report that we discovered where he talked about Mr. Watts in connection to another individual. Probably, if I had to take a guess, Cashel Williams from Fifth Ward, who actually did do the cooperating against Watts in the Hobo's case, but not Martell. We passed out some physical copies of that report to the people who were up here and gathered before we came back in. But ultimately, we think we just need to inquire. And so Mr. Greenberg and I would propose we just go have to conversation, go have a conversation and ask him about it. OK, that's the conversation that he said on Vlad. That they came in there and announced that they found the proof of him. Uh cooperating against Watts and that this is clearly not as what this is not what it's saying it says that we're going to go have a conversation and ask him about it some more because we're not going to be able to get any additional records on this we don't think and certainly not anytime soon the judge says okay all right so that needs to occur right now Julian says I'm sorry she says that needs to occur right now before and he goes yeah yes we just wanted to let your honor know that we were doing what we were doing before we went and did it. Okay, sounds good. Get your ass on and go do it. That's what she's saying. All right. They come back. He says, we're ready, Your Honor. Now, let's look at that timestamp. 137.16. 147.27. So, 10 minutes, counting the walking time to go find Wiley, because he's on his lunch break. Okay. That's how much of a talk they had. And from my recollection, it's not even brought up again. So Julian says, we're ready, Your Honor. The judge says, okay, so let me, 
we should bring in the jury and proceed. Let me just give you the ruling on the motions, or is it's really oral motions about the Garrett discovery, which is really boring, so y'all bear with me, because if I skip over it, somebody's going to say I'm hiding something. So just the kind of bottom line on that is that, in my view, the defense had has had the 302 for enough time to make use of it. And I do understand the issues that the defense is pointing to with trying to follow what is the 302 referring to, what are the attachments, basically kind of tracing the attachments and tracing what videos are which particular stills the 302 is re referencing in those particular paragraphs. So I understand that. I also understand the parties have, the defense has been in discussion with the government about this. So I guess, but at the end of the day, I just think the 302s was produced a long time ago and along with it, the attachments. And everyone is aware that the video, that there is quite a bit of raw surveillance footage even though the defense does not ex know exactly what parts of the video Mr. Garrett saw based on the 302, the defendants do know enough to cross-examine Mr. Garrett and to pr probe the strength of the foundation of Garrett's identification. Now, this is going to tell you how much footage they have if you pay attention here. So, for example, you could ask whether he viewed a couple of hours. Did he view six hours? Did he view eight hours or something less than that? give you an idea of how much raw footage they had and there is just there is enough information here to sufficiently test the quality of the identification and so on that basis i am i guess denying the motions to either suppress the identifications bar the identifications or conduct a voyeur dire of the agent on the procedure outside the presence of the jury uh, or of mr garrett outside the presence of the jury and I do know that the suppression motions requested an evidentiary hearing, as suppression motions almost always do. I view this as a separate type of request because it's more of a discovery request. I do understand that, first of all, the defense has been in discussion with the government for some time on this. Also, we walk, talked about this before Thanksgiving. So today is not the first time that this is coming up. But at the same time, it is coming up in the middle of a trial while we are trying to manage a number of witnesses. This witness's exam is already delayed us, delayed when this came up before Thanksgiving. And just as a practical matter, it is not. I don't view it as a kind of realistic or feasible thing to further delay this witness's testimony. And in addition, I do think that the 302 gives a sufficient along with the grand jury testimony, gives a sufficient basis for cross-examination. Okay, so with that, let's please proceed with the jury, unless, let me just ask one more time, anything else before we bring the jury, bring in the jury? Is it not from the government? So basically what this is reminding me of is when you pass that bad kid in school because you just don't want him back in your class next year. So the judge says... Okay, we're going to proceed with the cross-examination. Remember, they said five minutes, right? Okay. Mr. Kling says, Judge, I need a witness. Judge says, yes, we're awaiting the witness. Mr. Kling says, thank you. Then Mr. Kling says, I'd like to say no further questions, but I suppose, and everybody gets quiet, because in walks Martell, the government's witness, previously sworn, Mr. Clean asks the judge, may I proceed? And the judge says, yes. And we're going to do a little running time uh, tally mark, I guess you could call it. Uh, let's see. There we go. That was outside of bounds. I pulled it back in. Where, let's see. He's going to start talking at 158. Let's see if he gets to keep his five minutes or not. Mr. Clean says, good afternoon, Mr. Wiley. Okay, good, good afternoon, sir. I am one of the lawyers who represent to Carlos Offord. Yes. We haven't talked before, have we? No. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. All right. If there's any questions you don't understand, will you let me know, sir? Yes, sir. Can you, can I ask you another thing? If there's a question I ask you, 
Will you listen carefully to that question and just answer the question? Could you do that? Yeah. Okay. Now, you've met a number of times with Mr. Julian, right? Uh, yes, sir. How many times? And there's nothing wrong with that. How many times have you met with Julian? Numerous of times. Long, five times, five times, six times, something like that. I don't know. Long enough and frequent enough where you call him Jason, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, I knew his name on YouTube. So shit, everybody knows who he is. His name is Jason on YouTube. I mean, I mean yeah, I mean, he on YouTube. I mean, I mean, where have you seen Mr. Julian on YouTube? When somebody leaked the courtroom record on, on YouTube and, and, and he was talking and they said his whole name. Now, for the record, that's bullshit. Because when this case first started, it wasn't Julie, Jason Julian. It was Morris Pasquale. So, Martel, I just hemmed your ass up again. It was Morris Pasquale. Because that's what I used to call him, Pasquale. It was Pasquale. So Julian says, okay, somebody leaked a court record on YouTube. Uh, yes, sir. Well, let's talk about YouTube. You do YouTube for entertainment, right? Yes, sir. And you make, I do it, I do it for, I do it for, to feed my family. To feed your family. And, and entertainment too. You know, a message and, and, you know, and to tell the kids not to use guns, right? I mean, I mean, I tell the kids to do, to be better than me. Don't, don't go. To prison, don't, 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 do, don't go through what I went through. Mr. Wiley, I'm going to try this again. Listen to the question. And if you can, just contain yourself to answering the question. That would be easiest for us all, including the jury, to understand. One of the reasons you do your YouTube shows is to teach kids not to use guns, right? The different reasons. Okay. But that's one of the reasons, right? Not to use guns? I mean, I mean, yeah, not nah, nah. you ain't you, you, you ain't gotta kill nobody with no gun. I mean, you can license to carry like if you're eighteen years old and go get your license. Don't don't walk around with no no illegal weapon. Yet you hold yourself out as a news show, right? That's why it's called Trench News? I said, what? You hold yourself, your YouTube show out as a news show, correct? As a news show? Yeah. What's the name of your, what, what's the name of your YouTube? Trenches News. What's the name of your YouTube channel? Trenches News. Right. And you're talking about news, right? It's, uh, talking about the, the tr tr like the city, urban city news. Not regular. I talk about news like two, like, like, right. Everything, yeah. But things that you know most about. Things in the street. Things in the hood, right? Public record things, yeah, mostly. Well, when you say public record things, it is primarily to give out information to the community that watches your channel, right? Yeah. And nowhere in your channel does it say that this is a channel for entertainment, does it? Yeah. It says for entertainment. It says for entertainment when, when yeah, I can, I, can, I can go to my analytics and show you and my, and man, my, my YouTube label. That's entertainment. It says, it says let me, it lets the label be, as blog. It lets the label as different things. And, yes, my, my, it's set up the entertainment, yes. But when you're on your channel talking... You're not telling people who are listening, this is entertainment. You're holding it out as a news show, correct? I mean, I mean, when when you say inter, in, when you say entertainment, I mean, I'm going to try it again, Mr. Wiley. You hold your channel, your show out as a news show, correct? That's why it's called Trench News. You ain't you ain't let me like like you ain't coming at the question like you want an answer your, your your answer mr wiley but i'm trying to give you it's a real easy question the answer is either yes or no 
you hold your news, you hold your program out as it is, it is, it is, it is trenches, it is news channel, it is is all that you're saying. But but in order to tell the truth, right, Mr. Wiley? Excuse me. In order to tell the truth to the people who listen to it, right? In order to tell the truth to the people listening to it, when you're on your channel, you're telling your viewers, you're trying to give your people, your viewers, the truth, right? Yeah, but everything is not serious. That's, that's what I'm saying. There's different situations on my channel that, that's serious, and there's different situations on my channel that's entertainment. That, that's, you were here this morning when a video was played showing you walking up the steps of something, right? Yes, sir. And that was on Trench News, right? Yes, sir. The show that holds news out to be accurate and honest, right? Yeah. And that show was not filmed in the Durkinson building, was it? No, it wasn't. And you said it was filmed in the Durkinson building, right? I said live reporting from the Durkinson. That's what, where the entertainment kicks in. The court reporter intervenes and says, Mr. Wiley, you've got to slow down one at a time. So Mr. Kling gets started again, and he says, let me try this again. You said on your news show that you were filming it here at the Durkinson building, right? That's entertainment. Mr., I'm going to ask you once again. Yes, that's entertainment. Okay. Did you tell the people... When they were watching it, hey, this is for entertainment. It's really not at the Durkinson building, but I want to give it the flavor of a courtroom. I mean, I mean it's a skit, so you, you, got, you, got, you, got, you got jail rooms, you got people doing skits. Mr. Wiley, I'm going to try it again, okay? There are rules in a courtroom, and the rules are, listen to the question. You want me, if you don't understand, excuse me, the question, excuse me, I don't need, excuse me, ma'am. At this point, like, if I can't answer an honest question back, like, like I'm just fitting the answer, no, yes, no, yes, or, or no, because there's more to the answer than yes or no. Sir, you should listen to the question and try and answer as directly as you can. I understand that, ma'am, but he, he, trying to, he trying to, like, get me to say something where he's, he want me to say, and it, it's not like that. That's what I, I'm, try, I'm saying. I'm educated, too. There also will be, there also will be, there will be a redirect chance. So you should answer the question that he's asking, and there will be an opportunity for redirect. And just so you know, slide that in there. We're at the five-minute mark, folks. Just wanted to throw that in there. So, Mr. Kling get started once again and he says that's what I was just going to say when I'm done Mr. Wiley and the other lawyers are done Jason is going to have a chance to ask you questions if there's anything you need to clear up right you understand yes sir okay and when you were on your show saying I'm here at the Durkinson building that was a lie wasn't it yes it was when you said they're selling Rolos and I have a wonderful donut and coffee downstairs, that was a lie, wasn't it? Entertainment, yes, it was a lie. Okay. But I ain't got to tell them that, though. They, like, they, they, they already know. Everybody know except for you guys. Everybody knows it's entertainment except, yeah, except for you guys. Yes, yes, yeah. So when you're on the TV telling people not to use guns, that's entertainment. Is that what you're saying? I mean, I mean, I mean, like I said once, guns, guns do not kill people. People kill people. Okay. Is that a lie or the truth? That's the truth. And that's what you tell on your news shows, the truth, right? That's the truth. People kill people, not guns. I can set a gun down. It's not good. It won't just shoot. Mr. Wiley, everything you said on the news show about Duck's trial, that was not the truth, right? That was a video. You saying anything I said on the duck trial is not the truth. Well, let's go through it one at a time. You said you were at the Durkinson building. 
that wasn't the truth, right? No, that wasn't the Darkinson building. That was a skit building. That's a court, an old court building. They let you go do in there, go in there and do skits. They they let you. You can come in here and see what courthouse allows you to do skits in it. Excuse me, sir. I will not answer that. Judge, I would ask. It's a courthouse. Judge, I'd be asking that he be directed to answer the question where he did the skit. West Bumblefuck. Pardon me. West Bumblefuck. That's what I said, sir. You should answer the question. Yeah, that's, I'm saying, that's where the location is. You should, sir. Then Julian jumps in. Can we have a sidebar, your honor? The judge says yes. Now, if it was me at this point, if I was one of the defense attorneys, I think I'd be already having my assistant write up a grievance against the judge for her not doing her job and enforcing the witness to answer the questions correctly. But this judge is acting more like a judge, a school teacher that just wants to pass the student along to the next grade so they don't have to deal with it any longer. And that's fucked up. Even though, yes, I do believe these guys are guilty and they need to be punished. At the same time, right is right and wrong is wrong. And if the ones in authority and in power cannot follow the rules, how do they expect that we should allow them to enforce them if they're not following them the, themselves? I'm just saying. So this is going to be a sidebar. Mr. Julian is going to make excuses for Mr. Wiley, some bullshit lies, but here we go. Your Honor, I think Mr. Klings made his point. But I don't know that pressing this witness to answer this particular question is something that needs to happen. Here's why I think he's pushing back on this, his location. And I think he pushed back on providing his specific location with Ms. Gaichetti as well is a subject of much interest. Let me just say it like this. Ain't nobody asked him where his trailer park ass was living at. They asked him. Where did he record that at? That's what they ask him. That's all right. You got Joe's going to come to you, Jason St. Julian. Why are you ashamed of your name and trying to change? Let me just get off that. Cause it's St. Julian, by the way, folks. He don't want people to know that. Anyway. It says that he is a public figure and people want to harm him. And maybe some of this will come out on cross. And maybe some of it will come out on redirect. Well, he's got no problem going live, walking down the street. He was a public figure then. He just, you are boosting his head too much. That's what you're doing. He ain't nobody. He's a criminal, a snake. But anyway. But it's a courthouse. I'm. It wasn't the Durkinson courthouse. But answering this specific question will kind of pinpoint where it is that he lives. No, it won't. No, it won't. He did that shit out there at No Jumper. I ain't stupid. And so I would object to the relevance of 403. It's not necessary. I think he's made the point that Mr. Kling's made the point that it wasn't true. Mr. Wiley made the point that, of course, it's not true. It's entertainment. But he doesn't need to reveal where it is that he filmed this. Greenberg jumps up and he says, Judge, is the government willing to stipulate that if it was not a studio courthouse, if it, in fact, was a real courthouse? Julian says it was a real courthouse. Greenberg says, and the witness is so. When the witness says it's a studio courthouse, it, he's not being truthful. Julian says, I don't think he said a studio courthouse. I think he said a skit or an outside Greenberg said, a skit courthouse. Julian says, and he can ask him what he means by that. But it was not a federal courthouse. I think that he's getting at, I think he also said, it's an old courthouse. I don't know if this courthouse is still in use anymore. Okay. So Greenberg says, there's no prop courthouses floating around the state of Illinois, Judge. I've been in enough places. I know that's not going on. Mr. Boyle jumps up and he says, and that's, what, that's what's called for the professor's follow-up question. 
Mr. Wiley has this tendency to volunteer stuff that are lies. He lies when the going gets tough. He lied about, oh, it's not about to, to protect his location. He lied, oh yeah, this is a skit courthouse. They let you just come in and shoot videos. That's a lie. That's a problem. When someone takes the stand and lies, you should be able to cross-examine them on that specific lie. By the way, we passed up the 10-minute mark. Julian says, respectfully, Mr. Boyle doesn't know what's going on with his situation. Julian, bitch, you don't even know. You pretending like you know. You only know what that boy done told you. And I purposely haven't previewed a lot of what's going on in terms of his situation. I said some of it with respect to Mr. Sloan, not all of it. I haven't said any of it with respect to Mr. Wally. But there's probably even more of it relating to him than there is as it relates to Mr. Sloan. The salient point was the statement on the video that it was the federal courthouse, the Durkinson courthouse, wasn't true. That's been established. Beyond that, in terms of where it was, the jury in the gallery doesn't need to hear that, Your Honor. Mr. Kling says, Judge, if he was so frightened, how come he content continues to do YouTube channels, which he continued to do after we had this issue? He's on the air every night. Julian says, Unfortunately, Miss Gaiacchetti opened the door to that. And it's going to come up on redirect. He's going to say, I'm going to ask him why he started to do some of those things. These things once his name was put out there in the public, the public sphere. And he had to get out in front of it. And what he's going to say is, I had to give myself some cover because people were pressing me on whether or not I was the cooperator. Well, that doesn't stop you from pressing other people, does it? Nobody's going to do to you what you haven't already done to everybody else. Greenberg tells the judge, Judge, you should direct this witness to answer the questions. And he's correct. He's on the stand. He's subject to cross-examination. He's not answering the questions. Your job, frankly, Judge, when a witness doesn't answer the questions, that's a yes or no question, is to tell them to answer the question yes or no. If the government wants to get up, and ask further questions, they can do that. He was asked a question. He's given answers that are not truthful, and we should be able to continue with the cross-examination. If he doesn't want to continue to answer the questions, then they should. the government should move to strike his whole testimony in total. Julian says, my objection was not as to the yes or no question. My objection was to Mr. Kling asking Mr. Wally the location of the courthouse. So this crackhead alcoholic judge decides to kick in finally and say something. And she says, okay, so I'm going to sustain that objection because of the safety issues that the government mentioned. If there were no safety issues, it would be a different scenario. Bullshit. I've been trying to at times, but I've been doing it on a pretty limited basis. Yeah, you're not doing it hardly at all. I'll instruct him to answer. If you ask me, I'll definitely consider instructing him to answer on a particular issue where he's been evasive or giving long-winded answers. But sometimes, like earlier, I just thought, well, maybe this is part of the cross-examiner's strategy to let the jury see what this guy, how this guy presents, not unlike Mr. Sloan, who I also thought was slumping over in a way that was not what I sh would consider kind of appropriate for court but I just thought this was part of his demeanor and so it's just a fine line on when to step into that so what she's saying is because Salone was slumped over and not sitting up proper and respectful he got chastised but the bullshit that Martell's pulling in the courtroom he's not getting chastised because she thought maybe the, the defense might want the jury to notice that this is where the defense should have jumped in and said, nah, bitch, that's not what we were trying to do here. So then she goes on and she says, so here I'm drawing the line at pretty limited instructing people to answer or instructing people to what to do. I'm just letting them kind of reveal, testify consistent with however they naturally choose to present. But if you ask me to do it, I'll do it. I just, and when I see it's getting really out of control, I'll do it. 
But I'm kind of intentionally holding the line until it's pretty far. So Greenberg says, Judge. And she says, that's the view on that. Greenberg says, Judge, I thought this witness said that he has been in Chicago and he's still in Chicago and that the courthouse is not in Chicago and it's not in any of the color counties either. Julian jumps back in and now we're at 15 minutes. I think that came out a couple of different ways. I think he said at one point, and I'm going to clear this up, he no longer lives in Chicago. I think he said it to me. I think he said it to Miss Gacheria. I think it might have just been a misunderstanding later on in her cross-examination, and he did say, I never left Chicago. I think he was saying it in response to something else, but certainly it didn't come out that way. He doesn't live in Chicago. The judge jumps in. She says, okay. So I think based on that, I think the location of the courthouse is not, I guess, sufficiently. I can see how it is relevant to impeachment, but it's just not relevant enough or the pr pervasive value given what's already been explored that it's not the Durkinson building. I would sustain the ad objection on the 403. And it might be a different story if there were not the same safety ish concerns with identifying exactly where this witness is. But I think in this situation, under these circumstances, where there is a safety concern, I will sustain the objection. Mr. Kling says, Judge, I trust Mr. Julian, but I'd like to have a voyeur dire of the witnesses out of the presence where he can talk about his safety concerns. The judge says, as in right now? And Mr. Kling says, as in if we're going to go on out of the presence of the jury, obviously at some point. The judge says, I guess, what's the government's position? Mr. Kling says, why don't I leave this alone for the time being? I'll move to something else. We can move along. The judge jumps on that and says, oh, so Mr. Kling goes back to the questioning of Martell. And he says, Mr. Wiley, without telling us the location of the courthouse, how did you get permission to use that courthouse? It's open to the public, sir. So anybody can film a video in that courthouse? Anybody can walk in there and film it? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Did you have to get permission from anybody? No, sir. You didn't have to pay anybody. No, sir. Okay. When was that video shot? Video was shot. Uh, I don't. Uh, it was shot within. Um, I'm gonna say August or September. Or August or September. Went 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 to no jumper after no jumper. Probably September, October. I don't know. I can't really tell you. Be specific, man. Now, you had the right. You had to make arrangements for a videographer as well, right? Let me just pause right there. The way Martel is speaking is robotic. Not just the way that I'm making it sound, but if you look at those the, the Senate structure of how she's typing out what it is that he is saying, it reminds me of a, like a, a robot with a computer for the brain that's trying to go through a file and, and find the answer to something and verbally, he's just saying half of the name of the file that he's looking through or some shit. He sounds dumb. And, and by the way, the person that made the comment about how he sounded, YouTube got your comment and put it in the holding tank. And if I would have approved it, I would have gotten probably a reprimand. So I didn't approve it. But. There are words on YouTube that you cannot use, and the R word is one of them. I'm sure we can find other words to use. So anyway, going back to uh, when Mr. Kling says, now you had to make arrangements for a videographer as well, right? No, sir. I do everything myself now. I ain't got to pay nobody. So you were filming yourself? Yeah. How did you film yourself walking up the stairs from behind? Nah, man, man what I mean... I don't paint a videographer. Like, like everything is done by myself. Like everything's done with me and my wife. We don't need nobody. Well, when you say you don't need nobody, somebody filmed you walking up. Yeah, my wife, my wife. 
But you, you asking, do I pay somebody? I don't pay nobody. I don't have to pay my wife. Well, let me ask you about some payments. You received a bunch of payments from the FBI over the period of time that you were working as a confidential human source, right? What are you talking about? Like what? This case, you received a bunch of money. This case, I, I, this case I received. Let me finish. You, you're talking so fast and, and then you're telling me to let you. Uh, in this case, you received a bunch of payments in the connection with you providing information to the FBI, correct? A bunch of payments, like, like, like what do you mean? Like, like I got transportation and I got relocation money? Well, let's turn yourself. Agent Doyle testified that every time you provided information, you got payments. Yeah, yeah, Agent Doyle said he gave me 10. That lady said hey, that Agent Doyle, uh, Mr. Wiley, listen. He said he brought me $10 down to where I live. Mr. Wiley, listen to my question. And if you don't understand it, please let me know. Do you remember getting a payment on May the 4th, 2021? We went through this. I don't remember, sir. You don't remember any of the payments. I don't remember, sir. Judge, I'd like to put up on the screen a list of the payments and mark it offered exhibit six. Offered six. And I ask that the witness be allowed to see it. The judge says yes. Mr. Kling says, can you see that, Mr. Witness, Mr. Wiley? Can you see that in front of you? No, sir. The judge says, just one second. Mr. Kling says, let me know when you can see it. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. I see it. I see it. May the 4th, 2021. You got $1,000, right? I can't remember, sir. Well, whether you remember the date. Yeah, it says right right there, but but I'm not going to agree to none of this because it says May the 12th, 2021, $10. Like, who's going to come down there where I live at, for $10? Who's going to come down there like it says $10 specifically? I understand that. So I ain't going to agree with it. Somebody who is desperate for money and ask so nobody the fbi for money some somebody whooping that's what it is and, and i ain't mr wiley agreeing to it mr wiley let me stop you from whooping may the 4th 2021 you got a thousand dollars right man i don't know if this list is correct because once i see these ten dollars like like i know for a fact there ain't nobody ever got the fbi building and none of that shit give me ten dollars like bro mr wiley let's try it ain't no 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 again no 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 mr wiley let's try it again i'm trying to try to try, try it again okay i'm gonna say it one more time with you listen to the question this list is not the judge finally jumps in sir accurate sir just listen to the question, please. This list is not accurate, ma'am. I'm telling you that right now, just as I was looking at it, it's not accurate. The judge says, he'll just ask a question and then just listen to that and give the answer. Please, sir. So Mr. Kling tries again. So if this is a list coming from the FBI, not accurate. Let me finish, Mr. Wiley. If this is a list that the United States of America gave to the defense lawyers coming from the FBI, you're saying it's not accurate. Is that right? Man, look, I tell you, I never got no 871. I never got no 558. I never like, 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 I never got it. I never got. So this got, got to be wrong. That's what I'm say, telling you. So it got to be wrong, man. They whooping. So you're suggesting that the FBI, man, they whooping, man. I'm suggesting that. That's what that, that's what they whooping. The FBI's whooping too? They whooping, man. What do you mean by whooping? Who would you define that for the jury? They, 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 they're lying. They're stunning. Or whatever you want to say. Because I know damn well ain't nobody come down where I live for no $10. Finna bring all their way down there for $10. You finna drive three gas tanks for $10. So, like, stop it, man. So, if Agent Dole gave these figures here, here's, man, stop it. Mr. Wiley, sir, please don't interrupt. Okay. The questions, thanks. If Agent Doyle gave us these figures, you're saying he's lying. Man, look, objection, asked and answered. I don't know, I don't know. Objection, it's been asked and answered several times. It hasn't been answered once. Overruled, you may answer. I may answer. Yes, please. Thank you, Miss Your Honor. The question is, if these are the numbers we got from Agent Doyle, they're whooping. 
And whooping means you mean they're lying. They, you, they're lying, man. So you're saying Agent Doyle from the FBI is lying about these figures. Hey, look, I don't know how he chopped them up or how he did it, though. But I, I know for a fact, you telling me, just listen. Just look at this. Look, Just look at this. Matter of fact, I ain't gonna need, I ain't even going to feed into you, man. Hey, look, look, it's whooping, man. And whooping, is, it means lying. Yeah. Okay. So May the 4th, I'm telling you that, 2021. Judge, may I enter this into evidence? Objection, can we have a sidebar? Yes. Julian says, <clears throat> this is not a proper exhibit to be moved into evidence. This is a letter from me to the defense lawyers disclosing payments to Mr. Wiley. There's no foundation. He said he doesn't. Certainly, he can't say that he recognizes the letter. He's never seen it. But he also said that he doesn't recognize those amounts. So I object to this on foundation and also on 403 grounds. Mr. Kling says, sounds like, Julian, either you, you twiddled some numbers around or you just covering for Martell lying. One or the other. Mr. Kling says, Judge, I'm not seeking to introduce the letter. I'm just seeking to introduce the list, which Mr. Julian gave us as the list of payments made coming from the United States Attorney's Office. Julian says, Your Honor, it's a letter from me that's page two. The list is on page two. By the way, it also relates to other witnesses, Your Honor. If they want to create some sort of demonstrative, de we can cross that bridge when we get to it. But this disclosure that I sent to them relates to this witness a different witness who's already testified and a different witness who hasn't yet testified this should not go back to the jury now that's interesting okay let us sink in Mr. Kling says I'm not suggesting it go back to the jury judge I just want to read the, le the list solely with respect to Mr. Wiley, not with respect to anybody else who's on the exhibit that the government gave me. Just that list to see whether he remembers any of these payments. Julian says he can read it without moving it into evidence, Your Honor. He's been reading it, and I haven't objected. But he just moved it into evidence, which is why I objected. Kling says, I will exercise the list po portion and exercise everything else and just mark as exhibit the list which I will move into evidence and not exercise what is that excise okay Julian says objection okay if they want to create a demonstrative with those amounts that's fine I object to my letter to the defendants disclosing benefits to this witness and by the way some other benefits that are in it they indicate that they don't want to go into and i don't think they want to go into relocation payments for the safety and all of that relating to this witness to mr sloan my letters should not go into evidence your honor they can come up with something else that's fine that letter shouldn't go back to the jury the judge says okay i agree the letter should not be admitted into evidence it is fine to use it as a basis for the cross it is fine. It is likely fine to create a demonstrative that with just that information. Are you looking just to publish it or Mr. King says, yes. She says, does the government object to the publication of it? Julian says, as long as they zoom in on just the amount that are the payments for information, that's fine. Kling says, that's what I'll do. Judge says, okay, can you just make sure that any other material is covered or somehow? We're coming up on 25 minutes now. It was, Judge. The page was folded, so the only thing that was displayed is the list of money. Judge says, okay. So I'm going to proceed on the assumption that it's just being published. It's not being admitted. And if the government sees any issue, then please flag it with the format in which it's being published. Okay. So then Mr. Kling goes back to questioning Martell. He says, Mr. Wiley, I'm going to show you a list of payments that we got from Special Agent Doyle. 
and ask you if you can tell us about any of these payments. Ain't, ain't that the same list that, that I just told you? Ain't, ain't that the same list that you just showed me, man? You haven't seen the list, have you? This is the same list. The list is that's just, that you, on your screen. Just showed. Just, you just folded it up, man. Okay. Kling says, okay, the list is on your screen, right? Yes. And you're telling the jury that you don't remember any of these payments. Man, look, man, I ain't agreeing to nothing on here. Because if I answer one, yes to one, bro, a lot of these payments is, is, is not. No, no, I ain't not, I'm not, not answering. Let's deal with to it. May the 4th. No, 2000. Negative. Let's deal with May the 4th, 2021. I don't remember. You don't remember. Judges, can we go on the... Mr. Clean says, so you don't know if that's accurate. Martel says, I don't know. The judge says again, can we go to a sidebar really quick? Sorry. Martel says, I just told you that. I don't know if it's accurate. So then they go off to their sidebar. The judge says, sorry. Did you intend to publish this right now because it is not published to the jury right now? It is published. Sorry. Kling says, I would like to publish to the jury. The judge says, okay. It is showing more than just the list. He says, I'll cut it off. She says, okay, thanks. Then they go back to the open mic. He says, at least I'm getting my steps in for the day, judge. And then he turns back to Martel and he says, Let's try it again. You see a list of payments on the screen, do you not? The court reporter says, I didn't hear that. So Mr. Kling says, you see a list of payments on the screen, correct? I see them once again, sir. The judge says, we're going to publish to the jury. Mr. Kling says, I request that it be published to the jury. The judge says, okay. Mr. Kling says, May the 4th, 2021. You got $1,000, but you say you don't remember that. Again, sir, this list right here, I'm telling you, just this list, the whole list, it's not accurate, man. Okay, is the May the 4th, it's not accurate. I can't tell you. I can't tell you nothing, but I know that this list is not accurate, bro. I never got nothing, even like when they say they gave me some money, like like to relocate, they never gave me no even dollar, no none of that, bro. Like, nah, nah, I ain't admitting to, nah, I ain't, I ain't answer this. Mr. Wiley, nope. Mr. Wiley, if you don't remember, you don't remember. And that's fine. But I'm going to ask. But when I tell you, I don't remember. The judge says, sir. You asked me the, sir. Same thing, bro. Like, like you asked me the same stuff. And, and I'm telling you, I don't remember. You unfold the paper three times and then ask me the same, sir. Things, bro. Sir. Just one second. Now, see, at this time, this is when the judge needs to get some duct tape out and hold him in contempt. She says, I understand. I don't mean to interrupt, but we also just need to let the lawyer ask the full question and then answer. Otherwise, if people start interrupting, it gets really hard for the court reporter, for me to understand, for everyone to understand. So just wait for him to finish the question, please, and then you can answer. Thank you, sir. Excuse me, Your Honor. He asked me the same question five times. Well, like, sir, part of, but if you would just wait until the, he finishes the question, then it will make the whole thing go faster. So let me just ask. Well, if I tell him I don't know, though, like, like, do you still want me to answer until I say yeah? Sir, just please ask. Let me ask Mr. Kling to ask the next question, and then we'll keep going. So Mr. Kling. <laughs> Mr. Kling says, all right, let's deal with, we'll take it one at a time. If you don't remember, let us know. No one's trying to trick you. We're not. You've been saying the same shit, man. Like, like you've been saying the same. Like, like we we gonna go to the number? Well, I don't know, bro. It, it, it's a, it's it ain't accurate. So I'm just telling you, this list is not accurate. This list is not accurate. Period, bro. Like, you, you ain't gonna ask me no dates, no none of that. It's not accurate. Period. Okay. They don't even give it, you no. Know, they they don't give you no 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 dollar, no none of that. Like like they don't even give you no dollars. They give you all straight money. Like so, fifty eight. I never got. So you're, that's what I'm telling you, bro. So you're telling the jury that this list ranging from May the 4th, 2021 of $1,000 through March the 3rd, 2023 of 2024, 
you got none of those amounts. Hey, man. That, that, that's, that's what I'm saying, man. I, I got relocation money. I got transportation money. I got that. I understand that. Yeah, yeah, I got that. But what I'm saying is this list is wrong. They, they, they're telling you what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that. I'm telling the, the jury this list is wrong. They like don't give you no odd money, no dollars or none of that. They they give you all straight money. So I I, I don't know what 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 this list. So I'm I'm just telling y'all. Well, do you remember what May the fourth, twenty twenty one? Oh my God, man, Mr. Wiley, this is the fourth time. This, this is what I'm saying, Your Honor. Objection, objection. He's saying the same thing. Ask and answer. I'd like to finish the question. It's not the same question. Overruled. And we're at past thirty minutes. So let me just, Mr. Kling is going to ask questions, sir. Please just wait until the questions finish and then answer. And then we'll proceed. The May 4th, 2021 payment of $1,000. Can you tell the jury? Let me finish. I know what you're going to say. Can you tell the jury whether that's bogus or whether that was something you just don't remember? Excuse me, jury. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember, you know, that specific date. So I ain't going to lie to y'all. I'm, I'm telling y'all, like, like this list is like, like, just look at it. It looks perfect. So, Mr. Wally, let me go to the next payment. You know, May the 4th, 2021, same date, another $2,500. Are you telling me? They gave me, they gave me, Mr. Wiley, $2,500 in separate payments. Come on, man. Like, knock it off, man. Like, hey, look, no. So you're saying you never got that payment or that's a lie that the FBI made up. Man, I don't know what's going on with all this list. I, I don't know how, how he set it up. I don't know what he did. But I'm here to tell you the truth on the stand and I'm telling the truth. Like, I don't know. I don't know what he's what he added up. I don't know. I don't know he's adding up and how, how he did it. I know I ain't never got no 558. I know I never got no 871. I damn sure know I ain't got no $10 from him. So what about the $2,000? This is bogus. On June the 8th, 2021, Mr. Kling, please start over, the court reporter asked. I'm sorry. She says one at a time. I was talking. I was doing the talking. Mr. Kling says, <laughs> on June the 8th of 2021, a payment of $2,000. Is that something that you don't remember or is that bogus? I don't remember, sir. I don't remember none of this. Numbers, you're going down. So, so you know, I don't remember none of these dates. So, you, you fit in the safe. Okay. So, if I went down each one of these dates, I wouldn't remember, ma'am. So, as not to drive the jury crazy, you would not remember these or I won't remember are these lies. Man, I wouldn't remember because, like I said, I'm truthful. So, I tell you that, that this list is correct, then I'd be lying because I know I never get, received no damn $10. You know what I'm saying? That's first of all. So I'm not going to agree with nothing. That just be agreeing with it. No one wants you to lie, Mr. Wiley. Exactly. All we want is the truth. Let me take you back to Parkway Gardens. When is the last time that you were at Parkway Gardens? Last time I was at Parkway Gardens, the end of 2010, beginning of 2011. like, And you were there and you saw people doing various things that Mr. Julian asked you on direct examination, right? I mean, what is you saying? What, 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 what did he ask me? You got me, BB, more specific. Mr. Julian asked you about drug dealings. Is that right? He asked me about Newtown. That wasn't doing, he, they wasn't doing no drug dealing when I was there. Not in Park, not in Parkway. I mean, like, like, like they wasn't, like, they, there was no major drug. No, 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 it wasn't. Okay. What about in Parkway? You said not in Newtown. In Newtown, there was. In Parkway, no, there wasn't getting no money, bro. It wasn't no drugs there. Probably like some weed or something. Like, like that's it. Like, like, they don't have no drugs or none of that. Now, you said to Mr. Julian that you saw people or you heard about people doing going to meetings, right? He asked me, did, did, did they have meetings? And, you know, it's, it's, it's just part of gang culture. It's part of Mr. Wiley. I'm going to, it's part of try any gang. Mr. Wiley, I'm going to try it again. Oh, my God, Mr. Julian. You ask me half questions, man, and you want me to answer this shit just yes or no. I'm not. I'm not. If you ask me a question, I want to be able to answer it. You know what, what I'm talking about? The best of my ability. You, you, you want me to say yes and no games. I don't play them games, sir. If, if I can't explain myself, explain what, what you're saying because you're on some trick. Now you're tricking me to say something, and, and no ain't going to be, be me, man, Mr. Wiley. No going to get me, man. Nobody's trying to trick you. 
All we want is the truth. Nobody's trying to trick you. Well, then just stop the shenanigans, man, and come on. Mr. Wiley, when you were at Parkway, you said you saw people involved in going to meetings, right? Or you heard that they were going to meetings. I mean, it's just part of the culture, man. It's part of the, uh, any gang, anything. I'm not asking you as an expert as part of the culture. I'm asking you, didn't you tell Mr. Julian on direct examination that I never went to no meetings with them. I never been to no meetings with them, but you're going to have a meeting on your block. Like if it is a problem, if there's anything come up missing, if you're going to have a meeting and, and, and on the block, I never went to none of those meetings. And that's what I told them. I never went in a meeting, but they, they had them. And if it's, you call somebody to the back, then that's a, that's a meeting. You know, it's just, it, it is what it is. When was the first meeting that you heard about? What do you mean with the first meeting that I heard about, man? You said people were having meetings. When were they having these meetings? Like whenever there was a problem. If there was a problem, you're going to have a meeting. You're going to call everybody in there. Whenever there are problems, sir, I can't give you no specific date. You don't have no of your own personal knowledge whether people were having meetings. That's or that's what they're supposed to do as part of the gang culture. No, this is what I'm telling you, sir. Ain't no specific days for meeting. A meeting could be held when you you in trouble. I mean, a meeting could be held when you violated someone. A meeting could be held at any time. You, you could just wake up in the morning, everything good, and then everybody to the back. You know, meetings can happen anytime. How many meetings did you go to, Mr. Wiley? Man, hey, look, that's irrelevant, man, to duck case, man. Mr. Wiley, how many meetings did you go to? I didn't go to no meetings in no block. Okay, so you in Parkway. Never saw anybody go to any meetings. Hey, hey, I, I could see. I could see them. I could see them, but I never went in there. I'm not, I'm not from the, they block. So if, you, if you're not from they block, you're not allowed in the meeting. No way. So, you know what I'm saying? You, you're trying to trick me, somebody. You're trying to trick somebody. you you real evil, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Evil, man. Real. Real evil. The observation, Mr. Wiley. Mr. Wiley, do you know whether there were any books for these meetings? In other words, ledger books. You said there was dues collected, right? If I wasn't, if I wasn't in the meeting, how could I tell you that there was dues collected in the meeting, man? That's a good question, Mr. Wiley. No, I'm asking you now because you're asking me that. Mr. Wiley, so you don't know whether there were, that's your guess, that there were meetings, right? Man, hey, look, when you have the average person, the average block, the average gang block or anything, when, when you have meetings, when, when you have meetings and shit like that, yeah, yeah, of course, they're going to be dues or whatever. Uh, you you got to pay or put in for the block m memorials and all, and all that shit. But I never, I never, I can't tell you that I was in the, the meetings. I'm not, I'm not seeing them pay dues. I can't tell you that. You never saw Mr. Offord go to a meeting, did you? Did I ever see Mr. Offord go to a meeting? Yes. He was a kid then when I was there. You? He was a fucking kid. When I was in there, man, he was, a, he was younger. You? He wasn't, he wasn't even in the, he wasn't even, he wasn't even like part of no BD when I was in there. You got to think, man, about it, man. Oh, six. How old is he? You never saw Mr. Offord go, come on, man, to a meeting. Like, correct? Stop it, man. Like, stop it. Is that correct? I think you got me mixed up with the last dude who was on the stand. What's a goofy? There's gang literature. Gang. I was fixing to say goofy, just a person, man. But I was fixing to say go there. Goofy is just a person who, you know, I can't even explain it. Goofy is what it is. Somebody who doesn't do much. Somebody at the bottom of the rug. Huh? Huh? Somebody who's at the bottom of the pile, right? Somebody who's not a shooter. Somebody who's not a killer. Somebody. That, that don't mean you're a goofy because you. Nah, 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 nah. No, 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 no. What's a goofy? No. A goofy is like, like you could do something goofy. You can like, like, like you could be a goofy because somebody took your shit. Like robbed you or something and you ain't did nothing about it. You could be a goofy. There's just, there's different ways to be a goofy, man. Because you don't do anything with respect to ops, right? What? Goofies are people. Who don't retribution, do retribution for opposite groups. Isn't that right? Man, no. You, you try to stretch out your words, man. No, no, no. What are your words? You trying to add, you trying to add another dictionary word for our goofy is goofy, man. If you do something like, like what you're doing right now is goofy. What you're doing to me is goofy. This is a prime example, bro. So I'm weak in the gang, right? I'm down at the bottom of the rug of the gang. Is that what you're saying? No, I ain't got nothing. Not, it ain't got nothing to be. It ain't got you. You're goofy. It ain't got nothing to do with the gang, man. 
It's it ain't got nothing to do. You you could be a goofy and a civilian. You could be a goofy and rich. Poor, you could be a goofy. And you never saw anybody could be a goofy. Mr. Carlos with an old block chain, did you? Have I seen Carlos to Carlos with with an old block chain? Yes. No, I ain't seen him with no chain. I wasn't there when when he when he passed out all the medallions. God damn it. I don't know. Judge, may I have a moment? Yes. Mr. Kling says, in part, to clean up my mess. Then he goes back to the questioning. Mr. Wiley, one last question. When is the last time you did, went on the air on your YouTube channel? The last time you, you, you trying to trick me. Hey, somebody else on my YouTube channel. It's called Trenches News Network. Somebody else on my channel. But the last time I was on my channel was, I, I dropped a video probably like five days ago. And I went live like, like probably five days ago, so, something like that. This trial began, right? No, Tuesday. When, when, when all, yeah, yeah, something like that. I ain't been on YouTube, though. I ain't been, been on, well, it was after you had already talked to the United States Attorney's Office, right? In connection with preparation for this trial, correct? What? That you went on your YouTube channel. What are you talking about, this week? Yeah. Somebody else is on my YouTube channel. When is the last time you went on your YouTube channel? I just told you that, man. I just told you. See, that's what I'm saying, man. This is what I'm saying. I'm getting to see the, the goofy. Remember when I told you we just broke that down? The word, the goofy word. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, you got to stop it. That. Mr. Wiley, when is the last time you broadcasted? Not somebody else. When you, Tuesday, broadcasted. Tuesday, let me see. Can somebody else look at my phone or something? Man, it's been days, Dan. It's been, it's been more than four days. And that was after Mr. Jason told you, Mr. Julian told you, not to discuss this case with anybody, right? And you discussed it on your channel. It's public record. There's people in the court. It, it's a newspaper, news reporter in the courtroom. He dropped an article, and they take it. And that, and that, that don't mean I got to tell them that. I, I ain't got to tell nobody nothing. It's public record. There's people in the courtroom who blog. I have nothing further, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Adams says, Judge, no cross for this witness. Borman says, good afternoon. And she will be starting the next cross-examination. All right, folks. I hope you learned a few things in this past hour that you were sitting and listening to this transcripts of a liabetic the most recent thing that was said was he finally admitted like we've been saying on our own platform over here he finally admitted to the public in open court that he was lying when he acted like if he was up in the courtroom reporting on the day's events when in fact he was just reading from the newspaper articles just like the rest of us he was no better than anybody else. Although he called me out of my name when, when I said that. So that means he'll call you out your name and call you a liar, even though you're telling the truth. And that's not for entertainment purposes. We found out that he lied about reporting against other Oblockians and other BDs. And you can best believe if he reported against the other, well, not Oblockians, but Parkway gardens residents that he reported against the other side of the street as well he it says blatantly in laverick marshall's case file that he told detective sergeant kevin johnson his handler that he had to move out of parkway gardens because the bds were trying to kill him because of the death of laverick marshall but if you go to Laverick Marshall's family's Facebook pages, guess what? They still talk to the man that accidentally shot their loved one, but they don't speak to Martell. And I'm sure you can guess why. It's the type of person that he is. It is he is the reason Rava was killed. If he would have never put that gun in Willie Sally's hand that day, Rava would have still been alive. At least through that day. I can't speak on past that. Has the government been covering up for Martell Wiley? Most certainly they have. The case that he spoke on from 2008. The case that he spoke on in 2011. 
was not nothing with this case, obviously, and it was not nothing with the hobo case, obviously. So we need to find out who it was you were snitching on. Now, this seems to be a good place to stop the part three of the transcripts of a liabetic, but you can rest assured that we've already got part four in the works. And part four will be the finale of the transcripts of a liabetic. Y'all be sure y'all share this because, like I said, I need to recoup some of that money that I spent over $180 on the four transcripts that I purchased. And by sharing this gets me more views. And by getting me views will help pay for the transcripts. Of course, you're always welcome to hit my cash app if you can afford it. If you can't afford it, that's fine. But sharing helps me as well. So, I'm going to try to get this part four done up tonight because I got to be heading back up to the hospital. So, let's see how far we can get. Maybe we can just wipe it on out. Wipe it out. All right. Y'all have a good evening. Thank you.